the Lord. Praise His holy name. Praise God is good. worship God. How excellent is your name in all of the earth. How excellent is your name, O Lord, O Lord, my God. How excellent is your name in all of the Our mouths and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for today. Thank you for our lives, for the grace to be alive today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the air that we breathe. If you have a child on oxygen for five hours, you will appreciate the gift of air. Let's thank God for the gift of air. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift I was of listening air. to somebody say like, he, he, for some days he could not go to, to the washroom, could not mm. could, could not poo. Ah, thank, thank, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Those small, thank small you. things that we think that uh, uh, some people thank cannot you, cannot urinate. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you Father. Thank, thank you, Father. Thank some have thank food, they cannot eat. Some can you. eat, but they have no food. We have food and we can eat. Let's say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, oh God. We worship your name. We give you thanks, oh Lord. We give you praise. We give you adoration. We thank you for all that you have been doing in our lives. Oh, we thank you for the gift of one another, the gift of family, the gift of friends, the gift of bread drink. We thank you for our jobs. You know, some people lost their jobs this week, last week. 
Thank you, Father. We see how yes. went to work today, came yes. back. We have hope of going some tomorrow. Thank you, Father. You, you know that some people are crying now because they lost their spouses. Well, the husband died, the wife died, the child died. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It could have been otherwise. Thank you, Father. We just want to say, Baba, oh, we have come to say, Baba, oh, we have come to say, Baba, oh, we have come to say, Baba, oh, thank you, Lord. I want to welcome all of you to our Bible weekly Bible study on this platform. I want to request Brother IK to please lead us in opening prayers and let's start the day activity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for giving us grace, O Lord, to come together, O Lord, to worship, O Lord, your holy name, O Lord. Father, Lord, thank you for your love, O Lord, for this opportunity, O Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, O Lord. Father, I believe, Father, Lord, I pray for grace, O Lord, that, O Lord, as we hear this word of yours, O Lord, your word will transform us, O Lord. Father, I speak to us through your words, O Lord. Father, I strengthen us through your word, O Lord. Every part, every aspect of our life, O oh Lord, that is lacking, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, because your word, O oh Lord, at the entrance of your life brings life, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that as we listen to you, O oh Lord, that your word, O oh Lord, will bring life, O oh Lord, into that very aspect of our life, O oh Lord, that is dead, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for grace, O oh Lord, that as we hear your word, that your word will transform us, O oh Lord that we will reflect our Lord Jesus in our conduct, in our character, Lord, mm -hmm. and in our speaking, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, make Jesus, make, give, make, make us, oh Lord, as a weapon in your hands, oh Lord. Father, Lord, your word says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto you anywhere I've seen against you, Lord. Yes, I Lord. pray for your mercies, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Every one of us, oh Lord, Father, Lord, your word says, oh Lord, Every one of us will see in our furniture of your glory, Lord. Father, every way we have seen against you, knowingly and unknowingly, I plead the blood of Jesus to atone for us, O Lord. Father, have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus. Wash us through your precious blood to be spotless from every sins, O Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. I pray for your anointing, O Lord, upon the speaker, Lord. Father, Lord, we are so blessed to have your servant that speaks the truth, O Lord. Father, Lord, Bless him, O oh Lord, feed him with boldness, O oh Lord, to continue to speak the truth, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, strengthen him, O oh Lord. Father, encourage him, O oh Lord. Father, motivate him, O oh Lord. Father, anything that is bothering him, O oh Lord, as he's worked for you, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, do that thing, O oh Lord. Answer his prayer, O oh Lord. That thing that bothers him, O oh Lord. Father, bless him, O oh Lord. Father, prosper him, O oh Lord. The, 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 the crusade in Nigeria, Lord, as, as your son will travel, Lord, back and forth, I cover the flight to the blood of Jesus. For his sake, O oh Lord, everyone will be protected, O oh Lord. I take authority, O oh Lord, over the village, O oh Lord. I pray for your presence to go before him. I pray for your presence to be with him. I pray for your presence to go after him, O oh Lord. Father, O oh Lord, use him to your glory, O oh Lord, so that at the end, at the last day, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, you will give him his crown, O oh Lord. Father, I thank you, O Lord, for your love upon his life and his house of the Lord. I commit every members of this fellowship, O Lord, even those that are not directly members of our, our IWAC fellowship, O Lord. Father, Lord, those that are participating with us, O Lord, Father, I bless everyone, O Lord. Father, I prosper them, O Lord. Father, I open the door, O Lord, for people to come to this ministry, O Lord, that will support your work, O Lord. Faithful servants, O oh Lord, direct people, oh, direct or oh, 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 liberals, O oh Lord, to come, to come, O oh Lord, because the harvest, O oh Lord, is plentiful, oh Lord. Father, I bless everyone that participates, O oh Lord. Those that are not here, our members, O oh Lord, I commit them into your hands, O oh Lord. Anything they're going through, O oh Lord, Father, help them, O oh Lord. Father, bless them. Father, strengthen them, O oh Lord. In time of need, O oh Lord, Father, be our strength. Be our help, oh Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for another opportunity to meet at this platform to share the word of God. Last week, we started a very interesting and unusual topic, little foxes that spoil the vine. What, when we say little foxes that spoil the vine, we're talking about those little, little things that we think don't matter. These days, a lot of people are not ready to take corrections that either say it doesn't matter or others are doing it. For goodness sake, that others are doing it doesn't make it right and doesn't make it acceptable to God. For we on this platform, we are citizens of heaven. Our focus is the kingdom of God. So we want to do everything possible to prepare ourselves. So we just finished the whole armor of God. Now that we are equipped with the armor, so we want to check those little areas that we may have uh, challenges in. So let's, let us look at our anchor scripture, Sons of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Sons of Solomon. Sons of Solomon is before Isaiah. Sons of Solomon. Isaiah, Jeremiah. Sons of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 15. If you are there, Isaiah is very popular. So after Sons of Solomon, you have Isaiah. Sons of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 15. Somebody there, can you please read? Praise the Lord. Amen. Sons of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 15. It's like... Sorry, not 5, chapter 2. Sorry. Sons of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Okay. Sorry. Chapter 2, verse 15, I read. Take... Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grips. Amen. Amen. Take off the little foxes that spoil the vine. Our vine, the, the farm, the garden, you know, Jesus is the is 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 the is the vine we are the branches. So we have to take off the little foxes that spoil the vine because our vine are blossom. They have fruits. The, 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 the leaves are tender. This ministry we attend is, is tender, is young, as it were. And we are trying to put our foot on the ground on the solid word of God. So because our fruits are tender, because we are young, there are those areas of our lives we need to guide against. Little foxes that spoil the vine. I tell myself that whatever I find a lot of people doing, the first impression that comes to me when I find a lot of people doing certain things, something tells me that thing is wrong. Because the road that leads to, the, to, to, to destruction is wide and many people are found in it. And only very few people are found on the narrow path that leads to eternity. So generally, once I see a lot of people doing a lot of doing certain things, I begin to be afraid. This thing could be wrong. This thing could be wrong. Little foxes that spoil the vine. There's the reason you should catch the little foxes, those rodents, those small, small animals, insects that come to eat up the, 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 the young fruits because they spoil the vine. They destroy it. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you look at... First Corinthians chapter 5. Let's look at First Corinthians chapter 5, 6 to 8. First Corinthians chapter 5, 6 to 8. Somebody there, please read for us. Talking about little forces that spoil the vine. Our prayer is that we will be we will take care of these little saints by the Can end of this sharing. Uh, Six to eight. I yes, read. please. First Corinthians five, six to eight. It is not right for you to be proud. Mm. No, the same. You know the same. A little bit of yield makes the whole branch of dust rust. Seven. You must remove the old yeast of sin, so mm. that you, so that you will be 
et only pure. Mm. And you will be like a new batch of drown without any yeast. As indeed I know you actually are. For our Passover festival is ready. Now that Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Eight, let us celebrate our Passover. Then, not with bread, having an old yeast of sin and uh, wickedness, but with the bread that has no yeast and bread of purity and truth. Amen. Thank you very much. Blessing. You are reading from uh, uh, Good News. Good News. Take off your pride. Take off your pride. My old says, your boasting is not good. This is ESV, Revised Standard Version. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little living leaves the whole lump? A little of it spoils the whole body, your character. You may be beautiful, you may be intelligent, you may be industrious, but your character may not be good enough. Your speech may not be good enough. Your temperament may not be good enough. Oh, don't, don't get, get near her once she's angry. Praise the Lord. That, those little things in us, I have my own, you have your own. So when I say you, I'm not necessarily pointing all fingers at you. I'm also pointing at myself. Say your pride. Good news, say your pride is not good. Say your boasting is not good. When I, when I entered, when I entered the stage, praise the Lord. Amen. You are the only one good at it. Amen. Amen. But if I didn't come for the meeting, the meeting would not hold. Who said so? Amen. Who said so? Before the meeting has been taking place. If you die, the meeting will continue. Praise the Lord. Amen. And who, who will not die? Amen. Amen. A little living, living the whole long. Please out your old living that ye may be a new long. Please, can you read that uh, verse, verse 7 again from the um, good news? Good news. Yeah, verse 7 again. You must remove the old yeast of sin. So old that yeast. Old yeast of sin. Uh, so that you be entirely pure then you will be like a new batch of drug without any yeast. As Amen. Did, I know you are actually are. For our Passover feast is ready. Now that Christ's Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those little things. My dear friends, let us examine ourselves and detect those little things that Christ will not be happy with us for on that last day. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. These are the things we are looking at. They may, we may not mention all of them. St. Paul said, like I told you before, those that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So there are very many. It may not be concentrated in one part of the scripture. Last week, we studied memory among Christians. Murmuring against your leaders, memory against your parents, memory against government, memory against the nation is so rampant. We should not be part of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. The children of Israel, they murmured against God. And last we said we should have a grateful heart. A grateful heart does not complain. We complain because of what we don't have and we neglect what we have. So if we have grateful hearts, we will not complain. We'll be thankful for what we have. A bed at hand, what thousands in the bush. Cherish what you have. Cherish your home. Cherish your life, your own life. A lot of people feel they are not important. Who am I? You are somebody, you are a child of God, a royal priesthood set apart for God's own purpose. Mm -hmm. 
praise the Lord. So Amen. start by loving yourself so that you can love others. That was a love your neighbors as yourself. So you have to love yourself, appreciate yourself, value yourself. We're not saying be proud. To value yourself does not mean you are proud. It's when you become arrogant and you feel that without you, no other person can do it, or you not consider your opinion as superior to another person's own. Praise the Lord. Amen. I shared a message during the week about uh, a man that wrote a book, an Eastern book, a traditional book that can teach us this language. And one guy just picked it up to say, how, why can, why we want tribe want to dominate the whole community? Man, I say, write your own. This guy has written his own. Go and write your own so that when your own come, we'll buy your own too. But for now, let's celebrate this guy that has bought his own, that has published his own. Praise the Lord. Be calm and have a positive attitude in everything was one of the statements made last week. Be calm. Have a positive attitude about everything. Be calm. Don't be like a boiling uh, pot of water. Or if you take a bottle of Coke and you shake it, shake it, when you open it, you evaporate. You waste a lot of it. And that is how we are. A guy, they tested, a guy said, somebody had a cup of coffee and another guy ran into him and he spilled coffee. They say, what did you spill? I spilled coffee. Why did I spill coffee? Because somebody ran into me. So what is in me is what I produce. It's what I, I spill. So if I have hatred and bad words in me, once somebody offends me, I begin to say bad words. Begin to swear. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So be grateful for everything and stop complaining. Amen. Amen. So we should know more about our leaders, about our pastors, about our church members and all that. Let us support one another to grow. Look at how the children of Israel murmured on their way from, from uh, Egypt. Say, Moses, why did you bring us here? You should have left us there. Why did you bring us to die here in the wilderness and for our children and our cattle? Because God hates murmuring, all those that murmured against God, they all died in the wilderness. None of them crossed to the promised land. Only jo uh, Joshua and Caleb, that we are above uh, 20, that survived. Every other person above 20 that complained and murmured against God died. That God is still patient with us when we murmur does not mean that he has withdrawn the punishment for murmuring. Are you with me? It's still there. That you have been doing this thing and going away with it does not mean the punishment has been removed. Maybe when driving, the, the, I'm supposed to drive 100 kilometers per hour and I start driving 120, 150. You will not be caught. One day you will be caught. That's why they say every day for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. Praise the Lord. So, apart from murmuring against our leaders, we also murmur when we pray. I've been praying, taking this prayer point for years. God has still not heard me. Does God see here? He hears. He answers. Be patient. Don't give up. Amen? Amen. Don't give up. It's possible at the time you want to give up that God wants to deliver your goods, wants to deliver your miracle, wants to deliver your blessing. Be encouraged, be strong. If you have nobody to encourage you, encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible says just um, uh, David encouraged himself in the Lord. When every other person, his, his friends, his uh, uh, army turned against him because of their, their wives and children that were taken captive by the Philistine. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Look for scripture, preach to yourself, minister to yourself. And you'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. So today we are going to start from, sorry, any questions or contributions from what we did last week? Did you learn anything? Has it improved your life? Amen. 
Any questions or contributions? Okay, let's continue. I want to take it that we are all happy and uh, we have no question. The, the, what we are studying today is keeping grudges and malice. Amen. Keeping grudges and malice. You are angry with somebody. You won't talk. I watched a video, a small a drama clip. A man and his wife were in the kitchen. They're not talking to each other. The, the lady wanted to use, uh, I think, a, to take some spices from a, a, a cup, a salt from a cup. The guy took it from the counter and put it on top of the chef, higher on top of the chef. So the lady could not ask her, ask him, please help me bring it. She tried to bring it, she, to take it, she could not take it. And she was not prepared to say, please help me. Amen. Malice grudges don't help let us look at james chapter 5 verses 9 first peter chapter uh, 4 verse james chapter so james chapter 5 verse 9 first peter 4 9 second corinthians 9 6 to 7 where are you James 5 verse 9. Yes, please. Do not complain against one another, my brothers and sisters, so that God will not judge you. The judge is near, ready to appear. Amen. Say, so do not complain about one another, so that God will not judge you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do not complain against another person so that God will not judge you. We complain about our spouses. We complain about our children. We complain about our employers. We complain about our pastors. We complain about our church members. We complain about everything, keeping grudges. No. I was writing a, a little bit of intro and I said, keeping grudges and malice leads to unforgiveness. And unforgiveness leads to hatred. Hatred leads to bitterness. When it gets to the stage of bitterness, it becomes a demonic uh, possession. Leads to demonic possession. At the time you are just angry, let's assume somebody called, just want to use an bit. somebody called A offended you. His name is A. So anytime you hear another person's name, A mentioned, you remember that the other A that offended you. This A sitting beside you might be very good, might be, a, 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 might be willing to be your friend, has been useful to you. But because another A offended you and you have not been able to forgive, you are keeping grudges, you are keeping enmity, enmity you are keeping malice, at the point that every other A reminds you of what the other aid did to you, it has become a form of demonic possession. You need to go for deliverance. It's stages. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. James, uh, we, we read James 5, 9, right? Mm -hmm. Let me read it from another trans. Can you please read it from King James? Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm in... Uh, James 5, 9. James 5, 9. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Who is the judge? The all-seeing God is standing at the door. So in your own interest, do not grumble. Do not complain. Do not murmur. In your own interest, not in the interest of, of the other person. Somebody said, a preacher said, all oh, forgiveness is like, uh, you offended me, I go take poison and I expect you to die. No, it's me that I took the poison that will die. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We are doing, we are running this race, not to please man, but to please God and to be happy at the end, to satisfy ourselves. Because at the end of the day, I will stand and give my account to God 
you will stand and give your account to God. You're not going to give the excuse that it, is my, it was my wife that offended me, it was my husband, it was that child, it was that minister, it was that pastor, it was that employee, uh, colleague in the office. No. You will stand and give your own account. He or she will stand and give his or her own account. Amen. You know what? One, one terrible thing about this grudges and all that is maybe I offended you. You are keeping grudges against me. I've come to say I'm sorry. I may not have, I may not have even realized that I offended you. And when I need that to pray in the night, I say, Lord, for every person I've offended, please forgive me. I am sorry. God forgives me. I am free. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. First Peter chapter 4, verse 9. 1 Peter 4, verse 9. Use hospitality. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Mm. Is that all? Yeah. What's hospitality? What does it mean to be hospitable? To be kind, show affection, give. Share, mm -hmm. give. Share with your visitors. He said, he said, can you show hospitality to one another without grumbling? Share what you have. Don't think it will not be enough. It's not, if you wait, wait until you have, you are able to prepare a, a very a, a delicious dish, plenty of food, if it is only there you are ready to share, then you are being proud. You are not ready. Share the little that you have. God knows, say, ah, how can I give this guy a soup without fish, without meat? If I give him soup with fish, he will say, ah, he will say it's, it's fish I'm eating, when I should be eat, eating a beef or eating chicken or eating turkey. Pride has set in. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I had some, some visitors some time ago when I was still single. And I said, brother, will you eat? Should I make food for you? He said, which soup? I said, you are not hungry. If you are hungry, you will not ask for the name of the soup. You are hungry, you want to eat. You are not going to be asking which soup. Then from which soup, what did you use? It beef or, or cow or goat or fish or nothing? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So be, be hospitable. Share what you have. Give us never lack. The man that is stingy is not the richest. Stinginess does not make you rich. Say it again. I say give, it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press that and shake it together. I'm running over. Amen. Amen. Without grumbling. It also pertains to offering. In the church, give as you are led, not by persuasion. Thank God in our church, we don't leave as is the first fruit offering, first month offering, middle month offering, middle day offering. No. Give as the Lord has laid in your heart generously. Some people say, what does the pastor do with the tithe? It's not your business. The Bible says, bring it to the house so that there will be food. If pastor misappropriates it, he faces God, not you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give without grumbling. Share without grumbling. That is very, very important. Share your food. Share your clothes. Share your time. Your resources without grumbling. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Any questions or contributions? Okay. Uh, yes, go on. Yeah, just a little contribution. When we talk about being hospitable, um, it means that we are ready to give to whoever. We are not selective Good. on whom to give. Mm -hmm. We are not selective on whom to give. We just give when we know that someone is in need. 
So uh, I think that that is a very good part of giving. We don't have to give to those we know can give to us. Some people don't give to the people that really need it, but they give to the people that, oh, tomorrow this one can pay me back. That is not genuine giving. When you, you give, you give to those that need it, who don't have to pay you back, who are really, really desperately in need, whether you know them or not. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is very important. Don't be a selective giver. Praise the Lord. Uh, Christmas is coming. You, you bring, bring out the list. Last year, this guy gave me a Christmas card. The other guy gave me a Christmas card. So I'm going to send a Christmas card as well. If you are able to give to everybody in, on your contact list, okay, it's even very cheap, easy this day. On your WhatsApp page, send Happy Christmas to everybody. Simple. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I'm very comfortable and happy with that one. Don't be a selective giver. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at um, Leviticus. Did you, read it, did you read verse 7 of 1 Corinthians 9? No, no we, have, we have not. We have, okay, sorry. Let's read um, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 7. Somebody there? 2 Corinthians 9. Six to seven. Six to seven. And then Please read. Uh, six to seven. Remember that that remember that the person who who so few seed seed we have a small crop. The one who sows many seed, we have a large crop. Mm -hmm. Verse seven. You you should each give. Then, as you have decided, mm -hmm. not with regret or out of a sense of duty, for God loves the one who gives gladly. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I, verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, ye may abound in every good thing as it is written. He has distributed freely. I'm in verse 9. He has given to the poor his righteousness endures forever. God gave generously to the poor. God is very interested in our systems to the poor, to the needy to those that cannot repay us back because they are in need. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, if you sow sparingly, you risk sparingly. If you sow few, in terms of giving, in terms, it also extends to your work, your input into your studies as a student, your contributions to your, to your, to your establishment, you may think nobody is watching. People are watching. He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. If you sow few seeds, you will reap few seeds. It's worse when you sow seeds and you abandon the farm. You don't take care of it. I say they that abandon their farms shall reap weeds. Amen. Amen. So if you abandon your studies, you don't put in more time. When the result comes in our days, they used to publish the results on the notice board. Without names, just your matriculation numbers, you come to the board. Yeah, so people that know your matriculation number, they will see your grade. Praise the Lord. And when you come to the notice board and you are, you're, you're not, your name is not on top, it's below, you are, taking, you are coming out first from the bottom, you'll be angry. How did you sow? He that sows sparrowly will reap sparrowly. And he that sows bountifully will reap bountifully. That's academics. In your business, put in time. In whatever you are doing, put in time, put effort. Don't be lazy. The way you serve people, that is how you are going to be served. Man of God told me that I introduced one of my younger ministers to him in those days. I said, This guy has been very helpful to me. Say yes. See, if you don't serve at an early age, you serve at an 
at your old age. Praise the Lord. So life is a life of service. Whom have you served? Whom have you helped? Not just help me, help me, help me. Whom have you helped? Everybody has something to give. You have time, you have money, you have ideas, give. Praise the Lord. He said, uh, verse 6, whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Praise the Lord. Okay. Again, I want, want to emphasize, don't be cajoled. Because you are expecting a blessing, you sow seed here, sow seed here, sow seed there. And when you are praising the seed I sowed in Ghana, help me. The seed I sowed in uh, Jamaica, help me. No. God will reward you. We are not giving to God because I'm sowing 5,000 because I want to reap 10,000. It will be doubled. No. Give joyfully to the need of individuals, ministers, and the church to support the work of the ministry. God loves a cheerful giver. Be happy when you are giving. Not grumbling. Praise the Lord. Not grumbling. They have come again with this announcement for offering. Ah, they use 20 minutes to talk. They use 30 minutes. They use 20. Uh, preaching does not last up to 20 minutes these days. But when it comes to announcement for offering, they take 30 minutes. My friend, stop grumbling. If you don't want to be a member of the church, leave. Instead of being there and grumbling and giving grudgingly to be noticed. Those that give to be noticed, they give grudgingly. If I don't come out now, they will say I'm stingy. But how does God see you? When you go out to give with grudge, you are not rewarded. Amen? Amen. God is able to make all grace abound. So that having sufficient, you have, you have enough. Praise the Lord. You will have enough. You think when you share, you will not have. It's not true. You will have enough. In all things, at all times. In all things. Amen. Amen. At all times. Except we become greedy. We want to acquire. I don't have money. I don't have money because you don't have, you don't have a strong reserve. You think, you say you don't have money. But you have the one for today. You have the one for tomorrow. Because you don't have a strong reserve, you say, I don't have money. There are people who want to have what you have and give glory to God. Amen. Amen. But when you give, look at what this, this when you give joyfully, he say, so, so that having all sufficiency, not just money, what about health? How about, what about relationship, friends? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What about friends, relationship? What about all that peace of mind? In all, at all time, you may be abound. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor his righteousness and just forever. Let us be like our father, God, who has given sufficiently to everybody. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Any Amen. questions? Any contributions? I don't want to be talking, talking hello, please. Can you share? <laughs> I won't be here next week. So you'll be the one talking. Okay. Let's look at Le uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 1, verses 3. Leviticus 1, 3. Exodus 35, 4 to 5. Genesis 4, 1 to 8. So let's three people just share it. Uh, Leviticus 1, verse 3. Exodus 35, 4 to 5, Genesis uh, 4, 1 to 8. We are talking about grudgely, uh, grudging and malice. We'll get there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Leviticus is very close to Exodus. Leviticus, Leviticus one, numbers. Three. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 3. Yeah. Leviticus. Okay. Yes, please. 
Yeah. Mama, I think you want to read now. No, yeah. go on. Go on, brother. Yes. Leviticus or one verse three. Yes. If his offering be a bond sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it off of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Amen. A meal without blemish. Your offering should be without blemish and voluntary. Very important. Voluntary. One respect, have a congregation where there is no one lacking and the congregation itself is not lacking because everybody gives voluntarily without blemish and without grumbling. Amen. Amen. Leviticus 1.3 and it specify the type of offering that you should give. It is when it is without blemish, not um, uh, you have new notes, you have dirty notes, it is the dirty notes you use for your, or torn notes you use for your offering. No. No. If you have dirty notes and clean notes of the same value, maybe the smallest denomination of the smallest value, but check, don't, don't bring out the dirty one and give to God. No. If you are not going to be able to afford, maybe you have, let's use the, 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 the Nigerian denomination. You have 1,000 naira, 500 naira, 200 naira, 50 naira, whatever. If you are not good, if you are not, if not, if it's not convenient for you to give 1,000 naira, don't give it. If it's not convenient for you to give, uh, you are not cheerfully giving your $100, don't give it. Give the one you are going to give cheerfully. I'm not saying it should not inconvenience you. It should inconvenience you. Let it inconvenience you, but give it cheerfully. Praise the Lord. Mm. I, I listened to a, a, a pastor. He said he was saving to buy a new car. He had saved his money for, for it took him some years to buy, to save the money. He was riding a, a, a motorbike and he wanted to buy a car. After saving to buy this car, they attended a VG all night prayer meeting. The church was praying for God to give them money to run a crusade program. Praise the Lord. Amen. As they joined their hand, pray faithfully. God spoke to this man and said, that's your savings. Go and bring it. God knew the amount. Say, go and bring it. Say, eh, I should go and bring it. Say, go and bring it. So he reluctantly, I'm not saying gradually, reluctantly, because he would think I've been saving this money for almost two years now to be able to buy a car when this my bike uh, becomes so too old for me for my use. And now you are asking me to go and you know the amount. He was not keeping the money in the bank, he was keeping it in the safe in his house. He was disciplined enough to keep it and not touching it. God said, go and bring it. So God can ask you, if, he, if God asks you, lays it in your heart, it's okay. It's different from when you are cajoled, when the expenses of the ministry is overemphasized to intimidate people to give. I don't like that. I don't do it. But it's also good to make the expenses of the ministry of the church known to members and let them give generously. Praise the Lord. And God asked this man to go and bring that his money. Well, he left them in the prayer meeting at night and went to his house, picked the, 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 the money from where it was, and he brought it and told the, uh, the pastor, look at the money we are praying for. God said I should bring it. And they blessed him. Few days after that, I think he got a contract and he was given, I think 50% mobilization, I can't remember. He was given a fee that, it, 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 the business just came like that. And he was able to buy his car, had savings, please God, praise the Lord. 
He bought his car. He had savings and he pleased God. And he, said, he said, God told him, he said, from now onward, you will never save for a project. Uh, you, 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 you catch the blessing that follows. Amen? Amen. He said, from now onward, you will never save for a project. That was what God told him. And that is how it has been with him for more than 50 years. For more than 30, 30 40 years now. Whenever he has a project, he just tell God, tells God, this is my project. And God gives him the money. Brings the money anyhow, anyhow. He said he was, going to, he was planning a vacation with his children abroad. And a um, few days of the vacation, he had, the money was not there. And somebody called him to say, help my child for school fees. And he just told the woman off. After he told the woman off, God asked her, him, why don't you even ask the woman how much she, she needs? He picked up his phone and called the woman and said, Madam, how much do you need for your daughter's school fees? I think it was 20,000 naira, small money for him. And God says, you see yourself, you disgrace yourself before this woman. He was looking for 20 million naira for his vacation and for his own project. He didn't have it. Somebody needed 20,000 naira. He asked the woman, give me your bank account. He transferred the money. Not up to two hours, he transferred the money. He received an alert of 20 million naira into his account. Somebody had deposited money for the purchase of, of goods, he says. He didn't know. He called the guys. He, after the person called, he said, ah, Chief, I needed to buy this thing in five months' time, but I have the money now. And if I keep it, I will use it. I decided to send it to you to keep so that in five months' time, when I need these goods, you will supply me. That was the money he needed for his, his trip. Praise the Lord. God knows your need. Let's train ourselves to give without grudge. Let's train ourselves to give, to share, to be hospitable, to give to the needy, not to be selective givers. Amen. Amen. It should be without blemish. And uh, it is that that is acceptable to God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That he may be accepted before God. So if you give and you are grumbling, God will not accept it. And if God does not accept it, it does not add to you. Amen. Amen. But if you give cheerfully, God will accept it and add blessings to you. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we look at, where are we now? Exodus? Amen. Exodus 35, 4 to 5. Exodus 35, 4 to 5. And Moses spoke unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the team which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, let him bring it, his contribution, with a willing heart. Amen? Amen. Willing heart, not grumbling. We have emphasized that enough, and I want to leave it at that point. And if there's any questions or contributions, please let us know. Give without grumbling, without hesitation, without uh, being cajoled. Amen. With a cheerful heart. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 8, then Leviticus chapter 19, verses 18. Then we'll move to the New Testament. Genesis 4, 1 to 8. Are you there? Somebody there? Genesis 4. 1 to 8, thank you. 1 to 8. Yes, please. And Adam knew he, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, 
and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare him, excuse me, bear his brother Abel. And Abel was a, was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, his, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect and Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why are that wrought? And why is that countenance falling? And if thou does it well, shall not thou, excuse me, if thou does it well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou does it not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they went the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, we're talking about grudge and malice. Two children, bro two brothers, made offerings to God from their own um, trade. Abel was a shepherd, he had feet, uh, 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 sheep, and the other guy was a farmer, he did the land. They both brought offering to God. God searches the heart, very important. Abel brought the best, according to scripture. Cain brought his soul. We are not told what Cain brought, but he brought from what he has, right? In the course of time, Cain brought to the, to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. What is had? If he plants cocoa yam or apple, uh, apple or potato or yam, whatever he planted from the, he, he cultivated was what he brought. Maybe it was the size. Maybe it was the quantity. Maybe it was the, uh, the size. He may have had a good harvest, instead of bringing the choice part of it, the biggest part, maybe he had, but he brought, and Abel also brought. The Bible says that, and, uh, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their first portion, of their fat portion, praise the Lord. So Abel would have, uh, selected the best of his flock as a sacrifice to God. And the Lord accepted that of Abel, not because of the size only, but also because of the content of the heart. Amen? Amen? Amen. And Cain was angry. Uh, so Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. It, it, it was written all over him. And he was angry because his brother's offering was accepted. Maybe you attend a school, grace are shared, uh, grace are distributed when you are given assignments and your classmates have more grace, higher grace than you, your countenance falls. You're not jealous of the person not to work harder not to ask the person to help you. You're not looking for how to destroy the person. You're not beginning to say bad things about the person. Praise the Lord. Or somebody, you may be wearing the same attire and people complimented the other person. Oh, you, you, this dress looks good on you. And no one tells you that you all looks good on you. You become angry. Little forces that spoil the vine. You may not go to the extent of killing the person with a sword or with a stone or whatever, with whatever weapon Abel, uh, can kill Abel, but your mouth, the gossip, the evil things you say about the person. The Bible says in our 
tongue lies the spirit power of life and death. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And so, a best content has fell, and um, God said to him, verse 7, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at you, at your door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Praise the Lord. Temptation will come to everybody. Everybody is tempted, but you must rule over it. Don't just easily give up to sin. Give in to sin. Oh, I was tempted. If you were in the same situation, it would have been, you would have fallen too. A preacher said, uh, in, the, in, the, in the case of Joseph, it's not as if the lady was only in the office that Joseph meets her. It's not only at school that they meet. It's not just a passerby. This lady was in the same house with Joseph every time. When Joseph is in the kitchen, Potif Mrs. Potiphar is there. Joseph turns to this living room to clean. Mrs. Potiphar is there. But Joseph said, why should I do such a wicked thing against God? So you must see sin. We must see sin as wickedness and resist it. Otherwise, it, 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 it will just catch you. God said to Cain, how did King James Version put it? Uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Genesis 4, 7 says, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the, at the door. Sin is lying at your door. It has a full step into your house. Your house is your heart now. That is where the grudges and the malice will come up from. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so Cain was in the field, in the farm with his brother. He rose against him and killed him. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. How many people have we killed with our tongues? We have said so many bad, evil things against somebody. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And if we have opportunities, maybe you have a gun, a weapon, you will also fire at the person. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about little forces that spoil the vine. Yours may not be killing with a sword or with a knife or with a gun, but with your mouth. You may not even say it out. But your heart says sin is at your door. You must rule over it. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's look at uh, Leviticus verse, chapter 19, verse 18, and then we turn to the New Testament. Like, oh, there are, just, there are some more in the, the Old Testament. Leviticus 19, 18. Are you there? Leviticus 19.18. Yes, please. Thank you. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, for thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. Amen. Who is speaking? He said, I am the Lord. If it were me speaking, you can disregard it if you feel like. But this is the Lord speaking. That you should not what? You should not have grudges against your neighbor. You should not take... You see, I, I, I was sharing with somebody or writing somewhere, I said there are three things that God has reserved for himself. Three jobs he has reserved for himself to do. He said, vengeance belongs to God. He will avenge for you. Amen? Amen. So when you try to avenge, if I don't, if I don't respond, they will think I'm a fool. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to avenge. 
God said, vengeance belongs to me. Then you want to fight your battles. The Lord said the battle is the Lord's. Amen? The battle is the Lord. He will fight for you. Then the other one God wants us not to take part in is anxiety. He said, have no anxiety about anything. Don't worry about anything. Let me worry for you. If you can let God worry for you, you will have a peaceful sleep. If you can let God, people will definitely have offend you. But please don't plan the vengeance. Let God avenge. Amen? And let Amen. God fight your battles for you. Amen. He said, you shall not take vengeance or bear grudge against the sons of your own people, your brothers and sisters, family members, church members. But you shall love your neighbors as yourself. I am the Lord. Very simple. I can't overemphasize it. We went out on evangelism one day and we met a woman and she asked me about gay if it is sin. I said, well, this is what God says about it. Homosexuals, this, this, this is what God says about it. She was happy with the answer. Then the Lord, the Holy Spirit brought me to say that it is not only homosexual that are sinners or that will go to hell, that if you don't forgive your brother, you will also go to hell. You say, you mean I will go to the same hell fire with these people? I say, yes. Because as at that time, she was having quarrel, serious quarrel with her brothers, her brothers and sisters over inheritance. After talking with her, sharing with her, we prayed with her, I asked her to call her brother and reconcile. And she did. Praise the Lord. He said, you should not have grudges against the son of your own people. Am I narrowing it to your family? I'm narrowing it to your church members. I'm narrowing it to your community. And your community are those in your neighbors. For I am the Lord. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's move fast so that we can finish this today. Finish this uh, topic today. Uh, where are we? Titus chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. And uh, 2 Samuel 13. 21 to 22. Yes, please. Somebody there? Titus 3. Thank you, sister. Titus 3, 1 to 7. Yes, please. Remind your brothers, remind your people to submit to rulers and authorities, to obey them and to be ready to do good in every way. To tell them not to speak evil of anyone, but to be peaceful and friendly and always to show a gentle attitude towards one another. For we ourselves we are our for we ourselves we are once foolish, disobedient and wrong. Okay, we, sorry, we sorry. Still... Let, 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 let me just say that. Using her, 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 her version of the scripture, say, tell your people not to speak against the authority. I want to encourage us, brethren, let us not speak against our country. Please. This may be bad. The government may be bad. This may be rough. But please, the scripture said, this command me as your teacher for today to tell my people not to speak against the government, your country. Amen. Amen. What are we supposed to do? Pray for them. Pray for your leaders. Go on, please. Take it slowly so that I can follow you. Okay, verse 3. Verse 3. For we ourselves we were once foolish. Mm -hmm. This was are wrong. We were slaves to passions and pleasure of all kinds. We spend our lives in malice and envy. Others hate us and we hate them. Verse 4. But when the kindness and love of God, 
our Savior was revealed. He saved us. Amen. Praise the Lord. God. These people, Hallelujah. your brothers, your sister, the community, people you condemn, you are not a child of God. You, we were once like them. What saved us? But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. So we owe our country prayers. We owe our leaders prayers. Otherwise, we are not doing good. Yes, please. Verse 5. He saved us. It was not because of any good deeds that we ourselves have done, but because of his own mercy that he saved us through the Holy Spirit who gave us a new birth and new life. So it, it is not because I we were good. It was because of his mercy. So when you pray, please remember to ask for God's mercy always. Mercy over judgment. Because we are all guilty at one point or the other. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go on, please. Verse 6. God poured out the Holy Spirit abundantly on us through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Mm -hmm. So that by his grace, we might be put right with God and come into and come into passion of the eternal life we hope for. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's okay, my dear. If the Holy Spirit that helped us, it is by grace. It is not because we are anything good. Why? The Bible says, why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at the remedy to these grudges and malice and complaints and others. Remedy, Colossians chapter 8, sorry, Colossians chapter 3, verse 8, Ephesians 4, 31. Colossians 3, verse 8. Colossians 3, verse 8. But now you must get rid of all these things. Anger, passion, and hateful feelings. No insult or absent talk must ever come from your lips. Yes, you must get rid, rid of all these things. Colossians 3, 8. Remove them from your heart. Remove them from your mind. And speak good. What it says you do? Speak good. Speak good. <clears throat> Colossians 3 8. Speak good. Begin to speak good about yourself. Speak good about your neighbors. Speak good about your country. Speak good about your family. Speak good about the church. Colossians 3 8, right? Yeah. That was it. Let me see what this guy says here. But now, you must put them all away. Anger, rot, malice, slander, and upset, uh, upset talk. How, is, is, did he say foolish talk there? Yeah. Can you read it again? There was something about talk from your mouth. Okay, Are you seeing there? Yes, but now you must get rid of all these things. Anger, passion, and his foot feelings. His feelings, no insults or absent talk must ever come from your lips. See, it, it, so, so, sometimes when certain things happen, so it's, it's crazy. The weather is crazy. The economy is crazy. So such foolish things should not come from your mouth. Amen. Amen. I'm having a bad day. No. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter three, 4, verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness, mm. rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. Harsh as words well, and slander. Go as, on. Well, as well as all types of evil behavior as well as all types of evil behavior. Get rid of them. They should not be found among us. So small, small sins, little forces that spoil the vine. It's a suggest way to settle differences among household of faith. When there is quarrel, 
in the church should, say, should suggest way to settle. We are running out of time, but let's look at Matthew 21, Matthew chapter 5, 21 to 26, then chapter 18, 15 to 17, then first, no, we'll take away those two. So, just, so there should be no quarrel anywhere, in the family, in the church, in the office, wherever. It will, but particularly in the church now, brethren, quarreling, Matthew 5, 21 to 26. Matthew 5, 25 to 26. 21 to 26. 21, I read. You have heard that it was said by them of old times, that shall not kill. And whatsoever, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be a danger of the judgment. So whoever kills is liable to judgment. Whoever is angry with his brother without a cause is also liable to the same level of judgment. Yes? Okay. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, mm -hmm. shall be in danger of air fire. Amen. So, 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 whoever calls somebody fool, you are crazy, you are mad, you are an idiot, is liable to hell fire. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. The person may be foolish, may have done foolish things, may not have been wise in his or her decision, but you are not in position to pronounce foolishness on the person, cause on the person. Yes, go on. 23, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remember that thy brother hath ought against thee, Leave it there, thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, first to first to be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer the gift. Amen. If you are going to make a sacrifice, you're going to or do thanksgiving, and you remember that a brother has offended you, or you have offended a brother, leave the gift. Just go and reconcile that wise. Your sacrifice is not accepted. My sacrifice is not accepted. I think we should stop here and pray. And then we'll, we'll continue from there next week. God helping us. Remember, we have not finished this place. Okay? It is four minutes to closing time. We'll just pray. Just bow down your heads and ask for God's mercy. That's all, because we are all guilty of these things. We are all guilty. God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my church members. Have mercy on my country. Have mercy on Canada. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy on the government of these two countries. Have mercy on your children. Have mercy. He said, get rid of these things. Anger. Malice. Slander. You say something about some, somebody, another person hears the story and does not want to see the person again. And you may not have said the correct thing. You may have exaggerated it. Last week when we discussed, we talked about exaggeration. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Just ask for God's mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Then ask God to help you. God, help me to overcome, to get rid of these things. Help me to get rid of these things. 
Reveal to me, Father, every other thing that I am doing that I think don't matter, that really matter before you. Pray for yourself, please. Ponder, meditate on these things. Review these things. After this, go play this message. After this, sit down and take notes and ask yourself. Am I ready for the second coming of Christ? If Christ should come now, will he find my robe, my robe white as snow? Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. We were like them before. So don't judge. Leave judgment for God. Don't avenge. Leave vengeance for God. Don't worry. Leave the worry for God. Don't fight for yourself. Let God fight for you. I was listening to a sister a clip, a, 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 a clip on Facebook. She said, it's not every response, every, you should, uh, you should, uh, every situation you should respond to. They accuse you of doing it. Say they accuse her of doing the thing. There's nothing she will say that people will believe, but the Holy Spirit just told her not to respond. Mm. And some people came to her, will you not just say something to defend yourself? They will believe you did it. The Holy Spirit said, don't defend yourself. Vengeance belongs to God. Father, mm. have mercy on us. Mm. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Mm. So that we will not be consumed or condemned after all this work with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the spirit you have given to us. The spirit of freedom and liberty. That you have poured about in the high. You see, when you give, when you give, you, you will have everything at every time. You know, some people have at some time. They don't have at every time. Amen. I want to have at every time. And what does it take to have at every time? It is to be hospitable. Share. Thank you, Father, for this topic. Thank you for this teaching. Thank you, God, for what you are set to do with us. We are not perfect. We are pressing onto perfection. Lead us to the end. Guide us by your word, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we will not derail, we will not break any of your commandments. The, Joseph said, why should I do such a wicked thing? Help us to see sin as wicked. Help us to run from sin in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the Amen. power and the glory. For that is the forever Amen. and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank every one of you that have participated here on Zoom with us. Thank those that are with us on Facebook. There's this number, phone number. And uh, Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, five eight seven nine eight seven six eight zero four. Can you please unmute yourself and introduce yourself or show us your face if it is convenient? Okay, by God's grace, we'll be here on Wednesday. Um, Maybe I can honor with anchor because I will not be around. I will be in Saskatoon by God's grace. And the following week, I'll be in Nigeria. But anyways, I'll discuss with I can honor if they can anchor next Wednesday. Otherwise, it will be the following Wednesday. On Sunday, we have service. It's going to be our communion service, um, 10 o'clock by God's grace, Eastern Standard Time at um, our new church location. Please fellowship with us. Follow us on Facebook and on YouTube. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you too. Have a good night. Bye-bye.